New World Order pawns, unbeknownstly posing as bleeding heart liberal pundits thirsty for the rewards promised them by their globalist masters, are ushering in nothing less than a modern-day inquisition targeted at so-called climate deniers. The scourge of falsehoods has now reached American college campuses. The Weather Channel reports a resolution passed by the Portland, Oregon School Board will eliminate words like may, might, and could from the district's curriculum. But it's not English lessons where these words will cease to appear. Rather, it's in science classes in the context of climate change and its causes. Last week, the Portland Public School Board unanimously passed a resolution which directs schools to abandon the use of any adopted text material that is found to express doubt about the severity of the climate crisis or its root in human activities. The resolution broadly calls for all Portland schools to develop an implementation plan for climate literacy. Where have we heard this attack on the minds of our future before? When my opponents say, we won't join you, I just say, your children are mine already. What are you? In time you will die. But your sons and daughters stand forever in my new camp, and in a short time they'll know nothing else but this new community. As far-fetched as those examples may appear, just take a look at the alarmist panic sweeping Washington, D.C. due to lining the pockets of Al Chicken Little Gore with carbon taxes. Let's take a look at the boogeyman himself. Here are a few of the most inconvenient lies presented by Al Gore and debunked by British Judge Justice Michael Burton and the Science and Public Policy Institute in 2007 when Gore's An Inconvenient Truth was being considered as part of the public school system. Newsmax writes, The expected 20-foot rise in sea levels caused by melting ice caps, the judge accepted that this rise might happen, but only over the course of thousands of years. The shutting down of the ocean conveyor. The judge claimed the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said this Gulf Stream may slow down, but it won't stop completely. In the Al Gore global warming movie, the former vice president says the hurricanes are getting stronger due to global warming. The Science and Public Policy Institute says there has been no change in the strength of hurricanes over the past six decades. Gore said Pacific Islands are drowning. Science and Public Policy points out that Gore's claim that low-lying islands near New Zealand are being evacuated is not due to global warming, but the unwise dynamite practices of the local fishermen. Eric Steig of RealClimate.org points out some further flaws in the movie's science. A link between CO2 emissions and invasive plant species. Gore makes this link. Steig says the invasive plant species is due to changes in the way land is being used, not global warming. Sorry, New World Order. The brainwashing is so historically cyclical that the growing majority isn't buying it anymore. Science is going to produce a new way to our, our civilization that is so sensational that we will turn off our use of CO2, and when we turn off our our fossil fuel, uh, the whole thing's over. It's over. We're not producing any more CO2. They don't have a basis to complain. Their whole gripe fest dies. In fact, it's only a matter of time before the true culprits responsible for the rising water levels and disappearing coastlines are held accountable. The globalist corporatocracy is devouring the world's coastlines with zero regulations. Sand is essential to make toothpaste, detergents, computers, mobile phones, our homes, skyscrapers, and that's just scraping the surface, no pun intended. Sand is the most widely consumed natural resource on planet Earth, second only to fresh water. 
follow the money? Are you actually surprised that the globalists are the true threat to the planet Earth? They will extract every dime from it and us until the devastation is irreversible. And who gets the blame? As a handful of globalists sit in their palatial mansions on the islands made from the very sand raped from million-year-old ecosystems essential to the delicate balance created by nature itself while the rest of us drown. You get the blame, sucker. John Bound for Infowars.com. It's very reasonable that the recent trouble in Paris is a result of climate change. Um, small and medium farmers have abandoned their farms because there's not enough water, not enough rainfall. Young people have gone to the big cities looking for work. There's not enough work for everybody. So the disaffected youth, as we say, the young people who don't believe in the system, believe the system's failed, are, are more easily engaged and more easily recruited by terrorist organizations.